thank you for introduction. Uh, it's my pleasure to that I can give a talk here. Uh, this geometry and topology seminar. Uh, today I'm talking from Japan, uh, unfortunately, uh, but I hope I can visit uh, Rio Montreal someday after this corona shock. Okay, let's start. Uh, today I will talk about uh, new, new, um, new topics on, uh, I introduced in the last year uh, about new CCK metrics and uh, recently, I introduced I introduced new capability of polarized manifolds, and here is today's contents. Ah, uh, uh, sorry, can you see this pencil? Yes, we do. Okay, <laughs> it works. And uh, okay, here is today's contents. And in the first section, I I will introduce new CSK metrics. Uh, which is an abbreviation for constant muscular curvature color matrix. So I will introduce uh, what is muscular curvature of color matrix. And uh, uh, I will motivate it by a moment map picture. So um, which explains, which formally explains a connection with uh, mucus stability in the next section. And uh, uh, but in the first section, uh, I will focus on uh, some special aspects of mu CSK metrics, uh, which cannot be explained by uh, um, by mu stability. So it is, uh, I guess, it is uh, also special. Uh, it is um, it is not observed in other uh, frameworks of canonical metrics in Keller geometry. And uh, in the next section, I will talk about new case stability uh, inspired from the moment map picture of new CSC metrics. And I, um, I introduce a uh, new Ftaki invariant of test conflations uh, by uh, introducing some, uh, uh, as an equivalent intersection formula. Uh, and I want to, I, I will explain about equivalent calculus. Okay, let's uh, see the definition of mu CSK matrix. Uh, let X be a compact Keller, uh, not always compact, but uh, usually we assume compactness. Uh, let X be a complex Keller manifold and T be a torus acting on X. And we consider T invariant Keller metric omega uh, and then with a moment map which is a map from uh, x to the x to t dual, where t is the Lie algebra of this t. And we also denote by mu c uh, the pairing of a uh, vector and this uh, moment map. And for a real number lambda and a vector c, we introduce s lambda c of omega, uh, which we call mu lambda. C, new lambda C scalar curvature, new lambda C scalar curvature, uh, which is defined by this equation. Uh, you don't need to remember this equation as I <coughs> will not get into detail of the arguments. So uh, you just need to remember these remarks. Okay, I will explain. Uh, and I will use this Kellerian convention uh, where theta denotes, theta C denotes the minus two times of mu C. <coughs> okay, uh, uh, it's better to remember this, uh, minus two times of mu. Okay, uh, the definition of mu lambda C C schematic is a Keller metric is called a new lambda CCS metric if uh, this uh, function uh, on X is constant function. Um, this notion is independent of the choice of the moment map mu since the moment map is a unique modular constant. And it is obvious from the equation um, that if we substitute zero in C, uh, then these towns vanishes. These all the all of these towns vanish. 
So the uh, new lambda zero CSTK metric is equivalent to uh, the usual CSTK metric. And uh, it is less obvious, but we can show when omega is in uh, Keda class proportional to the first chunk class of X, then uh, mu lambda CCSTK metric is equivalent to uh, satisfying the equation of Keda with soliton. Uh, which is a self-similar solution of Kelarich flow. Okay, this is the definition of mu lambda C scalar curvature. Uh, lambda is always a real number and C is, uh, all, is always a uh, vector in the Lie algebra of T. Okay, and I will explain, uh, I will motivate the mu scalar curvature by a moment map picture. Okay, let us firstly recall the usual Donaldson-Fujik moment map picture, uh, which uh, characterizes the scalar curvature in Keller geometry. Um, let M uh, be a symplectic manifold uh, endowed with a symplectic structure. Uh, and consider the space of almost complex structures uh, on M compatible with omega and put a symplectic structure, symplectic structure or omega on this infinite dimensional space uh, by this integration, uh, where A and B is an uh, element of the tangent space of this uh, infinite dimensional space, which can be regarded as an endomorphism of the tangent bundle. So this makes sense. And, uh, we consider a uh, Hamiltonian action, Hamiltonian group action, uh, the action by the group of Hamiltonian different morphism group. Uh, then we can characterize scalar curvature as the unique moment map of uh, this action with respect to this action. So we can characterize scalar curvature as uh, giving the moment map. And there is a similar picture on mu lambda C scalar curvature. Um, in this case, we consider torus action on symplectic manifold and consider team variant, uh, the space of team variant almost complex structures. And, uh, we uh, fix. Uh, we will fix uh, C in the Lie algebra of T, and consider a uh, C modified symplectic structure given by this integration. The change is just the change from the previous one is just uh, the change of this measure, where theta was uh, the minus two times of the moment map. Okay. Then uh, uh, mu lambda C scalar curvature gives a moment map uh, with respect to this uh, symplectic structure on this infinite dimensional manifold. Uh, uh, lambda can be taken arbitrarily uh, for fixed C, each fixed C. Uh, but actually, there is a constraint on lambda uh, to for the existence of the mu lambda C scalar curvature for fixed C. Uh, but um, <clears throat> this, uh, this, formally ex this picture formally explains a uh, uh, connection with mu k solidity in the next section. But in the first section, I will focus on the, uh, a different perspective. Uh, now, I, from now to the end of this section, I will uh, fix lambda instead fix C and searching uh, searching C uh, satisfying uh, some mm, some vanishing conditions. Okay, which is a generalization of Tianzhu's argument, Tianzhu's volume minimization argument in Keller with soliton. Okay, here I introduce mu lambda entropy as a generalization of Tianzhu's volume functional, uh, which I denoted as vol lambda, but today I consider minus log of vol lambda, which is defined to be this functional on T, 
uh, mu lambda is a functional on P. Uh, we define this functional by this equation. And uh, <clears throat> uh, we can express this as <clears throat> Uh, by using equivalent form and as uh, the integration of equivalent forms <clears throat> uh, like this. This uh, Lich plus D value, D value mu is uh, and omega plus mu uh, equivalent, uh, second equivalent uh, forms, uh, which defines a second equivalent cohomology class in the Carlton model of drum cohomology, uh, equivalent drum cohomology. And so uh, since we can, uh, we, we can de express this as this. And since we can, we have such an expression, uh, mu lambda depends only on the equivalent cohomology class uh, of uh, this. And this equivalent cohomology class is a, equal to the equivalent cohomology class of the first term class of X. And this also depends on this equivalent cohomology class a priori. But it, it actually independent on the choice of the moment map mu. Uh, so it, uh, this functionally actually depends only on the Kähler class of omega. And here is a proposition for this mu lambda entropy. <coughs> uh, if there exists a mu lambda CCSC C metric in the given Keta class, then this C must be a critical point of this functional. So it characterizes uh, the vector for each fixed C. Okay. And here is some properties of mu lambda entropy. Uh, so, so because of this property, <coughs> uh, we are interested in whether mu lambda admits a critical point independent of the existence of mu lambda CCS psychometric, and if the critical point is uh, unique or not. And this is the answer for it. <coughs> Uh, there always exists a critical point independent of the existence of mu lambda CCSC metric in the Keller class. So we always have a critical point, but the uniqueness um, <coughs> uh, breaks for some lambda. Uh, for this, this uniqueness statement is uh, interesting in view of TNG's volume minimization argument because uh, in the case of caloric solitum, <coughs> uh, the critical point is always unique, but uh, in uh, mu CSCK, there exists some lambda, sufficiently large lambda, uh, which uh, has more than, more than one critical point. Uh, so I put lambda freeze as, this uh, number, then the statement is, if we put lambda freeze as uh, <coughs> the supremum of lambda, uh, such that uh, mu lambda prime admits a unique critical point for every lambda prime uh, less than lambda, no, no greater than lambda. Uh, then this lambda freeze is always finite. So it is never minus infinity or plus infinity. So this is interesting because uh, for uh, sufficiently small, it is implies that uh, sufficiently small lambda, uh, they are always uh, uh, unique. They are always exists a unique critical point of mu lambda. On the other hand, uh, if we take uh, sufficiently large lambda, then it is uh, always not fine. Uh, the critical points are always not finite. And more interestingly, <coughs> uh, we can observe the relation with the, uh, some relation with extremal metric, extremal vector field. Uh, when, take, when we take the limit of lambda goes to minus infinity. And let's just consider the unique critical point 
the letters denote by C lambda, the unique critical point of this functional for is under this condition. Uh, under this condition, uh, by the definition of this uh, lambda freeze, uh, there is a unique critical point of mu lambda. And if we take such C lambda, then lambda times C lambda converges to the extreme of vector field, always converges, and uh, the limit is given by the extreme of vector field as lambda tends to minus infinity. <coughs> Uh, here, the extremal vector field is the unique critical point of this functional, uh, which is also independent of the choice of the metric in the Keller class. Uh, is a candidate vector, candidate vector for extremal metric. So uh, the equation of extremal metric is this. So in the limit, uh, it is some relation with the extremal metric. A mu lambda CSCK metric has some relation with the extremal metric. Uh, as a level of vector field, as the level of vector field, at least. Okay. <clears throat> now I explain by example, uh, which is the most easy example. Uh, we can explicitly compute the mu entropy, mu lambda entropy of CP1 uh, acting on, as U1 is acting on CP1. And we can explicitly compute the mu lambda entropy like this. And we can see that lambda freeze uh, is just 4 pi. Uh, we can compute this. And it is more interestingly, there actually exists a mu lambda CCS metric for uh, exactly two non zero vector uh, greater than a uh, non zero vector C for uh, lambda greater than four pi. So, since lambda freeze is the uh, supremum of the uniqueness locus, uh, we get some uh, non non-uniqueness of C for each fixed lambda greater than four pi. And there actually exists some new lambda C CSCK metric, which is not CSCK metric on CP1. And uh, uh, though I cannot explain geometrically, but uh, there is a limit uh, as lambda goes to plus infinity this time. Uh, then the family of this uh, non CSCK mu lambda CCSCK matrix converges on, uh, on a fixed point, uh, away from a fixed point of this U1 action, and <clears throat> which looks like parabolic antenna. So, uh, first uh, lambda, when lambda less than, lambda is less than or equal, than, equal to 4 pi, uh, the metric mu lambda CCSCK metric uh, looks like sphere, but when lambda goes to a lambda exceeds four pi, then uh, the metric looks like um, egg, and it eventually converges to a parabolic container mm, somehow. Mm. I don't know why this converges to probably Cantona, but the actual con con calculation shows this. <clears throat> and here is the graph of the mu lambda entropy. Uh, when once lambda exceeds four pi, is four pi, the graph of the mu entropy looks like this. It's like the wine bottle potential. And there is a critical point. Uh, there are uh, three critical points. <clears throat> so this uh, is an illustration for this non-uniqueness phenomenon. And before explaining a more interesting example, I would like to uh, explain some generalities of mu CSCK metrics. Uh, mu CSCK metrics is closed and the scaling and product of manifolds. Uh, but uh, if we scale the metric by positive constant, 
then lambda and C differs from the original one, and uh, product can be taken for uh, the matrix with the same lambda. <clears throat> And we can also perturb, uh, perturb lambda. Uh, if the mu lambda C second matrix satisfies this condition, where lambda one is the first eigenvalue of this Wittgen Laplacian, uh, which is po always positive. So we can always perturb uh, mu lambda C second matrix in the same Kähler class uh, if lambda is. Uh, non-positive. And we can also part of Keller class. Uh, so it means the existence of mu lambda CSVK metric in a given Keller class implies uh, the existence of mu lambda CSVK metric around the given Keller class. And uh, this is more interesting. Uh, if there exists an uh, extremal metric in the Keller class, uh, then there actually exists a uh, mu lambda C sigma metric in the same Keller class for lambda sufficiently small and lambda sufficiently large. <clears throat> uh, this is also uh, some application of implicit function theorem, but we uh, change our coordinate by lambda to lambda inverse. And we can argue, uh, we can use uh, the usual implicit function theorem and we can show this. And uh, Lardini shows the convexity of weighted merge functional. And since uh, mu lambda C, uh, CSCK fits into Lardini's weighted formalism, uh, it shows that uh, mu lambda C, mu lambda not, not foxy, mu lambda CSCK metrics are unique for lambda less than lambda freeze uh, modulo automorphism group. Uh, since we can take a product of uh, mu CSCK metric, uh, so it pro, uh, CSCK manifolds pro product with Keller's soliton provides uh, an example, typical example of mu CSCK metric. And, and it seems this uh, is a typical example of quantum populations. So it might be interesting to search uh, the existence of mu lambda CSCK metric on quantum populations. And it's, it is natural to ask uh, about uh, the existence of uh, mu lambda CSCK metric on Lulu manifold over CSCK manifold. And I will talk uh, the most uh, easiest example, uh, Calabian that's on the P1 bundle on P1. Uh, we, in this case, uh, if we consider this P1 bundle on P1, uh, it is isomorphic to the one point blow up of CP2. So it, the anti-canonical class uh, is ample. And we can, uh, we, uh, the classical results uh, tells us that there actually exists a Keller soliton on this anti-canonical class. And there also exists extremal metric. And there is no CSCK matrix. And using Calabian that we can show that there also exists a uh, mu lambda CSCK matrix for every lambda in this anti-canonical class. So it, uh, since uh, mu, mu 2 pi, mu 2 pi CSCK matrix in this class uh, is equivalent to Keller-Ritz soliton, and extremal matrix uh, can be considered as a mu minus infinity uh, CSCK matrix. This is mu 2 pi, and uh, this can be considered as mu minus infinity CSCK matrix. Uh, this results tells us that uh, we get a uh, continuity pass from extremal metric to Keller with soliton. So this is the first example of such uh, pass of canonical metric connecting extremal metric and Keller with solitons. And uh, this graph is the graph of this 
the graph of the pairings of C and lambda, uh, C and lambda, which satisfies, uh, which is the critical point of this new entropy. So this the, this graph tells us the, the this locus. And I showed the existence of new lambda CC schematic for this locus. And I don't know for this locus. And we can see from this graph, and uh, actually we can compute by uh, using computer, uh, that lambda freeze is uh, around here, around three times two pi. Okay, this is something unusual phenomena uh, that we cannot observe in uh, the usual uh, framework of canonical metrics in Kela geometry, I guess. Okay, this is a turning point of uh, this talk. So is there any question so far? Okay, no question. Okay, so let's go to the second section. Um, in the second section, I will fix uh, C uh, and uh, also fix lambda. And let us firstly recall the, the definition of the of talking invariant and the definition of the usual Q stability. Okay, recall for normal test conflation, uh, where test conflation is a family over family of polarized schemes over C, uh, which is a C star equivalent family uh, whose general fiber over C star, uh, whose general fiber is equivalent to, uh, is isomorphic to X plus uh, C. A test conflation is a such an object. And the Donaldson stuck invariant of test conflation is defined to be defined by this uh, intersection formula, where k is a canonical divisor. Uh, sorry, x bar uh, is the, the canonical compactification of this test conflation, where we compactify it as um, x cross c times. And glue is this. Ah, sorry. Then we can, uh, then we get a compactification of test conflation. And uh, sorry, this is alpha. And also get a compact uh, extension of line bundle on X. And then we can take a uh, intersection product like this uh, on X bar. And uh, this is also on X bar, and this is on X. And we get uh, that if, uh, we can understand the definition of the Nelson talking point. And then the K stability of a polarized manifold uh, is defined to be the, defined by the positivity of this uh, Donald Song talking invariants. Uh, this is an analogy of Hilbert manifold criterion for GIT stability. And the relation uh, with the existence of CSC metric uh, it can be formally explained by the previous moment 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 picture of the CSC metric uh, of the scalar curvature, uh, since they are uh, in view of in view of uh, the finite dimensional Campion theorem. <clears throat> So it's an uh, analogy of uh, Kempner's theorem that uh, people say uh, case stability must be related to uh, the existence of CSC metrics on the given on a given polarized manifold. And this expression is <coughs> convenient for the uh, following uh, this reason. I will explain. And um, in moduli context, uh, firstly, in moduli context, uh, test conflation uh, usually appears uh, by pulling back the universal family U on some Hilbert scheme along C 
uh, cyst equivalent morphism from C2 Hilbert scheme. We can pull back the uh, universal family on Hilbert scheme and get our uh, uh, test conflation. And uh, the test conflation constructed in this way is not uh, normal in usual. Uh, but uh, so, so for non normal X, uh, we cannot define this uh, canonical divisor, but uh, we can define the non key for non, non normal test conflations by using uh, homology third class uh, instead of this canonical divisor using the this term of homology third class, uh, which is which lives in. in 2 and minus 2 tp of x bar. Ah, oh, sorry. And uh, this is, since this is n plus 1 dimensional, uh, this leads in a of uh, n of x bar. And this leads in a n plus 1 of x bar. And using this, uh, uh, chow, chow class, uh, we can also take the intersection of intersection product, product with kappa and L, and then we can define uh, the some stack invariant, invariant for non normal uh, X. And this intersection formula is convenient to see the behavior of the some stack along the normalization and resolutions of X. And this is important aspect for me. To uh, reduce the uh, case stability to uh, the case stability with respect to smooth test conflations. Okay, uh, let us recall the results, established results in this direction. Uh, if the killer, if the killer class uh, admits, uh, if the this killer class. The first chance class of the ample line bundle admits a CSC metric, uh, then the polarized manifold is K polystable. Uh, though I didn't explain what is K polystable, uh, it uh, is uh, some condition, uh, it exposes some condition on equality uh, of. Uh, so if we have this for some test conflation, then the, the test conflation must be a product form. Now this is the capo stability. And uh, it, is uh, it is shown by Chen Dong Sun Sun and Tian uh, that the Kela class admits CSC metric. Uh, that, sorry, the Kela class proportional to the past Chan class of X uh, admits a CSC metric. So it is equivalent to the Keller isometric, uh, if and only if uh, this polarized manifold is capable stable. Uh, but when lambda equals to zero, um, we must change this for arbitrary L and arbitrary L when lambda equals to zero. Okay, this is non result. And <clears throat> In my talk, uh, I will talk about uh, generalization of Paul Tian's result in new CSCK setup, new case stability setup. So I I want to recall their results. Um, they proved that for G equivalent family of polarized schemes, there exists a G equivalent line bundle on the base of families uh, such that for uh, every C star equivalent morphism from C to B. Uh, for such a morphism, uh, we can associate a uh, test conflation and we can consider Donaldson stack invariant of this test conflation. Then this is actually the equivalent, and this is actually equal to the weight of uh, the, uh, the weight of the C star action on the, the weight of the C star action on the fiber, the weight of the C star action on the fiber of zero. So this, this is a line bundle. This is a line bundle on C 
and we consider the fiber OC, uh, fiber over zero, and there is a system option on this line bundle. And since the fiber is one dimensional complex space, uh, one dimensional vector space, uh, we can consider its weight. And the weight is equal to the Johnson of the invariant. And the weight is actually a known to be equivalent to this uh, equivalent first John class of uh, this pulley bank bundle, <clears throat> which is equal to this. And then the ransom stack invariant is equal to, the claim is that the ransom stack invariant is equal to this weight. And uh, using this, um, though this is not all, but uh, using uh, many techniques in Chandran Sanson and um, the, this uh, key product, using this key product, Alda Khan Lee Wan Xu proves that Q smoothable phonon varieties with K Einstein metrics form a proper algebraic modular space. Uh, they use these Paul Tian's results to prove the um, algebraicity of uh, K semi stable locus uh, uh, under, the, under some deep estimate um, of Chen Tran <clears throat> And uh, I also showed that there exists a complex analytic modular space uh, consisting of fun manifolds with calorie solutions. Uh, using very different technologies from this Alakan V1 shoe. I actually use a uh, moment map picture directly to construct uh, the modular space. And then my question is, can we compactify the modular space using their techniques and or, uh, make it algebraic using their uh, technologies? Uh, but uh, <clears throat> This result in calorie soliton uh, is a uh, uh, missing piece, was a missing piece. And I will explain on the, general, on the general, generalization of this result. Okay. okay, let us define a new case stability. And I want to define new talking variant for this compilation. Uh, let us now consider a polarized manifold uh, with T action, torus with T torus action. And we define, uh, we firstly define the uh, mu zero xi Ftaki invariant of a T equivalent test compilation uh, by this equivalent form intersection formula. Uh, though uh, I guess this is not. Uh, Usual notation, and uh, but and uh, yeah, but but it is well defined uh, real number for uh, for singular x bar, um, also for singular x bar. But uh, as I don't have much time to explain uh, about it for singular case uh, today, I want to give a remark on this intersection formula. Uh, that uh, when x is smooth, uh, we can express it as uh, this integration of equivariant forms. I guess this is uh, usual for people uh, uh, people who use this uh, equivalent Halton model uh, in daily life. So the, these uh, these components are uh, equivalent two forms. Understand as equivalent two forms, and since equivalent cohomology has no bound of degree, uh, we can take uh, infinitely many uh, products of equivalent cohomology class, and we can regard this as an element of this, I'm sorry, this cohomology class, um, the equivalent, 
this can be regarded as an element of this class. And we can also uh, see these as, uh, such, uh, as an element of such class, uh, such a homology, homology. And we take the evaluation, we take some evaluation of such homology class, and which is equivalent to the integration of the equivalent forms. And we can similarly define uh, for non-zero lambda. Uh, we can similarly define foot lambda C by uh, putting foot zero C plus lambda times some equivalent intersection of L bar, uh, which is actually L bar and L bar uh, minus uh, E L over E uh, copy L. This is the, uh, this must be substituted here, substituted here. Okay, uh, so I uh, cannot explain all about this expression, but mm -hmm, I hope that one can understand the, this by this expression. Uh, but, uh, Though this expression uh, has a meaning for smooth X, this, uh, this also has a general, uh, this also has a meaning for general scheme X, uh, mask of X. And here is a result for mucus and instability. Uh, T polarized manifold, uh, we call, uh, we define a T polar mine a T polarized manifold as new lambda C K semi stable if the Ftaki and mu, mu lambda C Ftaki invariant defined in the previous uh, slide is non negative for any test compilations. And this is a definition for K semi stability. And I proved for smooth X the mu lambda C K semi stability of X L uh, with respect to general singular test compilation is equivalent to the mu lambda C K semi stability with respect to smooth test compilations. Uh, this this is easily shown by uh, using this expression. Uh, so we just need to study some basics on equivalent intersection. And uh, we can also see that for smooth test compilation, the mu lambda C stack invariant is equivalent to, uh, since mu lambda C CSCK matrix fits into uh, formalism, formalism of Ladili's weighted CSCK matrix, and we can, um, and Ladili also defines a weighted stack invariants for smooth test compilations, and we can see the equivalence to the Ladili's definition for smooth test compilations. Okay, so from the Ladili from Ladili's results on weighted CSCK metric, we we can see this corollary. So it says if a smooth T polarized manifold admits a mu lambda CSCK metric in uh, and uh, fast chunk class of L, uh, then XL is mu lambda CK semi-stable with respect to general test compilations. Uh, Ladili showed that uh, this is mu lambda CK semi-stable uh, with respect to smooth test compilations, but under this proposition, we can see that uh, mu lambda CK sensitivity holds for general test compilations. And this is the last theorem, uh, not, not the last theorem. Uh, this is a generalization of uh, Paul Tian's results on CM line bundle. Uh, for a uh, fixed lambda and Xi, there exists a characteristic class. Uh, denoted as DXC of mu lambda, where mu lambda is related to mu lambda entropy, and DXC denotes its derivative. Uh, we, we can regard this as derivative and assigning uh, this characteristic class, assigning 
for each g times g equivalent family of wise schemes of a smooth g variety b uh, a uh, second uh, equivalent homology class of the base and it enjoys the following properties uh, we have naturality of so it is a characteristic class actually uh, so it behaves well for pullback of family and we can see that it is uh, related to Ftaki new index Ftaki invariant as uh, CM line bundle is related to the usual of Ftaki But uh, though CM line bundle is actually a line bundle, mm. <clears throat> uh, our cohomology class uh, lives in the R coefficient equivalent cohomology class, and it is actually this cohomology class depends mostly on C and lambda, and so it is not in general uh, Q coefficient cohomology class. So it can be, it cannot be uh, realized as a line bundle actually. Uh, but this case, when c equals to zero, we can realize it as a line bundle. Okay, uh, as a corollary, we can see that the moduli space of quantum manifolds with scalar uh which I constructed in. Uh, which I constructed is actually an algebraic space. Uh, uh, it is actually it is not actually a direct polarity of this theorem, but uh, this is the uh, last uh, uh, last piece last piece that I wanted to prove this algebraicity. Uh, but actually, we use deep analysis of uh, Chanson and Chanson 1. And I also have a plan for compactifying moduli space uh, by using the method of Lewin, uh, Odaka and Lewin Shu. They constructed a proper algebraic moduli space of uh, uh, Keller Einstein final varieties. And I also have a plan for compactifying the, this moduli space uh, of the quantum manifolds with Keller's solitons uh, as an object like space. Okay. And uh, I guess the time is over, but uh, I can explain uh, in. If I have more five minutes, I can explain the idea of a uh, simple idea of construction of uh, the yeah, 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 sure, sure, please, please, please okay. uh, if you, are, you have a little bit more okay. time. Okay. Uh, idea, okay, I will explain the idea of construction of uh, this uh, is a characteristic class. And I want to uh, assume lambda equals to zero uh, to uh, economize the space of uh, slide. Uh, we call the following expression of new lambda entropy when lambda equals to zero. We can uh, sorry, uh, we can express a new lambda entropy as like this: uh, the integration of equivalent forms. Uh, we can regard this equivalent, the integration, this integration of equivalent forms as um, elements of um, the integral can be identified uh, understood as a uh, element of equivalent homology. So these integral can be expressed as uh, like this. And this can be regarded as an element of formal power of, uh, sorry, this here we put 2k. Hmm. Here we put 2k. Uh, the formal power of uh, 
each degree of uh, even degree equivalent cohomology class, uh, equivalent cohomology. And the integration can be understood uh, push forward along this morphism. And uh, if we understood this integration like this, uh, we get uh, push forward lives in the equivalent cohomology class, uh, equivalent cohomology of the point, T equivalent cohomology of the point, uh, which we can, uh, sorry, this is for point, uh, this is not true, and uh, this is for point. Um, H hat T of point of R. And we can regard uh, the, uh, we can identify the equivalent cohomology of point uh, with the formal power series uh, over T. And and the relation with this equivalent intersection, uh, equivalent integration, and the push forward of this is uh, that this push forward uh, gives uh, gives the Taylor expansion of this functional. Okay, and uh, in viewing in view of this uh, observation, uh, we can generalize uh, this generalize this invariant. Uh, to uh, invariant for characteristic class for polarized family. And we can easily generalize this uh, to this uh, characteristic class for equivalent family of the polarized schemes. Okay, so we get some equivalent, uh, of, we get an element in formal power of equivalent homology and the idea of construction is uh, we differentiate it uh, at C. Actually, uh, uh, though I don't, I guess I don't uh, explain that the, uh, the differential of the mu lambda entropy gives uh, uh, gives actually uh, mu lambda C stack invariant in uh, for product conflations. Uh, it actually gives uh, the differential actually gives a uh, stack invariant and we want to differentiate it differentiate this uh, we want some notion of differential different differential operation on equivalent cohomology and i introduce uh, such a differential operation for each fixed c introduce a differential operation from uh, some subring of this formal power of equivalent uh, cohomology uh, subring h omega to from this h omega to the h two and uh, by as a mm, a way t axon b trivially. Uh, since we t since t axon b trivially, we can uh, decompose this as uh, um, this uh, T dual tensor with H hat G. And using this decomposition, we define a uh, differential operation so that when B equals a point, uh, it it actually gives a uh, differential uh, when B is at point and G is equal to uh, G is trivial. Uh, we can regard this as uh, uh, we can identify this thing uh, with uh, with the lingual uh, real analytic functions on T. And then uh, I want I want to apply this to this operation to a uh, new, uh, new lambda character uh, I defined in the previous slide. And uh, in order to apply such operation, we need to show that this uh, characteristic uh, actually lives in this class. And uh, in order to show this, uh, we use uh, 
the quantum model of the equivalent stellar drum homology, but uh, we actually uh, use a uh, push forward along the non, non submersive tropomorphism. So we, 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 <coughs> we use equivalent drum current homology, current model of equivalent drum current homology, uh, which is isomorphic to the equivalent locally finite homology of the X. <clears throat> and then, sorry, B of, of B, I guess. And then we get the element uh, applying this differential operation. Uh, we get a uh, characteristic class, uh, which we wanted. And to show that this uh, is actually what we wanted, uh, we use equivalent proton declaim law theorem. And we can see the relation with the stack invariant uh, can be uh, achieved by the really simple equivalent localization formula. Okay, this is the end of this talk. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, are there any questions? Uh, okay, so Vetislav wants to ask a question, so please uh, switch on your microphone. Yes, uh, okay. So, yeah, I have a question. Um, I, I guess my question is the following. Uh, this um, new constant scalar curvature, uh, it's uh, an interesting condition, but how restrictive it is uh, comparing to instance for with, with extremo? And more generally, uh, do you know any mono monotonicity results about uh, about the, the Futaki invariant? In the sense that if you have uh, extremo, then do you expect to have uh, always new extremo and so on? Actually, I don't know the monotonicity of the Futaki invariant uh, along uh, lambda. And uh, I actually compute this Calabrian that uh, uh, we can easily see that uh, for lambda, positive lambda, uh, we can see that um, there yeah, actually exists a new lambda series symmetric. But for this uh, lambda less than zero, uh, it is hard to see actually yeah, exists a new lambda series symmetric. The, the result, uh, the proof uh, for this is uh, depending on uh, depend uh, is uh, by computing explicitly everything, yeah. and I don't know uh, if the stack invariant is monotonic. Uh, I don't know the uh, general philosophy for being the. Uh, stuck in variant uh, is monotonic uh, along lambda. Uh, so, for instance, this uh, ansatz is 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 on the Hertzbruck surface specifically, or uh, you you can you can calculate in general. So perhaps the sub question is on a root on the mm. root surface. Mm. You have uh, classes with no extremo metrics. Uh, can you show that on those you you have? Um, New constant scala curvatures for some some lambdas, or ha have you tried to play with that? I'm not sure, but um, I guess mu zero C is symmetric uh, is a, a easier part or uh, easier easier case of showing the. Uh, Existence of mu lambda C symmetrics, but uh, the sign of lambda is important, I guess. Um, so, and uh, the si which sign is better depends on uh, the root surface we consider, I guess. So, in general, I, I don't know if uh, there exists a, a mu lambda C symmetric for. Uh, lambda positive or lambda negative on the surface, I cannot answer if uh, there always exists such metrics for on on the surface. But I guess it is easier to see the existence of new zero C symmetry. Okay, thank you. 
but I didn't check it yet. So another question, did you try to prove poly stability uh, or properness of the energy? Poly stability, uh, uh, not yet uh, as I heard that largely uh, is trying to prove it. Okay. <laughs> Are there any other questions? Um, yes, I have a question. Hello. 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 <laughs> Thank you for a nice talk. I'm just wondering, uh, do you expect any positivity results on this CM line bundle on the moduli space? For example, uh -huh. we have an algebraic space, but is it the quasi projective? Yes, I'm not sure, but I guess yes, it is because there is a uh, because moment map picture explains that uh, there is a positive simplex structure on the almost complex structure uh, on the space of almost complex structure, and so and uh, the uh, characteristic class I constructed. Uh, must be related to the cohomology and uh, equivalent cohomology class of this uh, S1 back C. I guess in the infinite dimensional, uh, for infinite dimensional base, uh, the Keller class, uh, the Keller class of this is related to this, I guess. So it must be positive, but I don't know the proof for uh, general base. So maybe still you can show that it's big. Huh? Sorry. That that it may be it should be big, right? The CM line bundle ID. Ah yes. Uh, uh, but I don't know. <laughs> uh, maybe it is Neff. I guess, yes, it is big and uh, yes, it is actually ample on the moduli space, but uh, I'm not sure the proof for now. So, so uh, an algebraic space is, uh, is, is essentially a moisture zone. Yes, yes, uh, uh, a priori moisture zone, but uh, I guess um, it must be, uh, projective, but uh, it's hard to prove it. And uh, actually, even in Keller-Einstein case, uh, it is just recently proved like this. Okay, thanks. Thanks. Okay, so if there is not any other questions, so let's uh, thank uh, virtually uh, the uh, speaker for his uh, very nice talk and impressive results. Uh, and let's meet uh, uh, next uh, week uh, at the same time. Thank you for listening. It was our pleasure. Okay, thank you.